Well, this is a rivalry which will be keenly fought by two of the local boys. Mark Noble and James Tompkins were brought up around these parts, and they know what this game is all about. The sold-out signs have been up this week. Over 30,000 in the place, around about 1,500 have made the 20-minute trip from Bermondsey. It is crackling at the bowling alley. Uh, I certainly expect it to be a, a feisty game. It's a vital step for both these sides in terms of their end-of-season ambitions, but this is a, a standalone fixture. It's all about pride, passion and very much about commitment from both teams. Millwall in the change trip to get the ball rolling. It is episode 99 of Neighbours. These who have been staring over the fence at each other since the 1800s. A rivalry which has its roots in the London dockyards. This is the latest instalment whose ship will be coming in tonight. Henderson looking to try and make out a quick start here for Millwall. And he's won the corner. Not the best handling from the off from Robert Green. It's a positive start from the away side and Rob Green really makes a meal of this Henderson. Just looking to put the ball into the six-yard box, uh, box, scuffs it. McCartney makes a mess of it, but Rob Green gives away a very cheap corner early on. There is plenty of height about Millwall, including Shane Lowry, who is waiting inside the penalty area. Robert Green is uh, almost surrounded on the West Ham United goal line. Scott Barron to take this corner. Well, this is a fantastic ball in from Scott Barron, it's flat, it's pacey and it causes the West Ham defence lots of problems as well, just the header from Alan Dunn, he just couldn't hit it to hit the target, if he did that, Rob Green might have had a problem. That was Trotter. Winston Reid, part of this uh, West Ham United back four, but this is a confident start from Millwall. They are battling for their lives, five points above the drop at start of play. West Ham United, remember, leading the championship, leading the fight for promotion. But uh, on days such as these, that is the subplot. The main plot is the derby. Well, it is, it's a vital game for both sets of uh, players, but of course for the supporters, they want their team to come out on top. Looking actually at the Millwall setup as well with with Jack Smith just playing as a holding midfielder, he looks as though he's going to try and get as close as he can to Kevin Nolan to stop the midfielder breaking forward. That's Carson Cole. Joey O'Brien. And the first chance for West Ham United to put some pressure on that Millwall goal. And you can hardly hear yourself think inside Upton Park. And Cole makes his dash down towards the near post. And now uh, it's Cole with a looping header. Well, Millwall won't want to give him too many clear sights of goal this afternoon. You see the difference in the delivery from set pieces from both sides. All Collison looks to do is just stand this up and give Carlton Cole something to attack. Any knockdowns will be picked up by a teammate. No goals in his last five games. And they're spearheading this 4-3-3, which West Ham United are playing today. They have played it a couple of times under Sam Allardyce, Millwall matching up. Yeah, it's interesting, James Tompkins normally at centre-half, just stepping out, playing that holding midfield rope. There he is challenging for the ball, and that will allow Noble and Nolan to break forward, and certainly Fober and Collison to get some width in the West Ham play. Henderson. There's Liam Feeney looking to try and force Apollos for Joey O'Brien. He's clipped off O'Brien, and Dillo Fye. Couldn't get rid of the ball, and Millwall back in possession. And the Kira making his debut, finding Feeney. Feeney has Barron for support, He's launched towards Keo. Matt Smith, who can hit them from distance. Plenty of power, but not the, the direction. Oh, they sat up nicely for him, plenty of Millwall players in the penalty area, that's important in the early stages. If Feeney's going to deliver, you need bodies in there. He falls nicely to, uh, to Jack Smith, but he's way wide with the effort. Well, there are plenty of Millwall fans packed into the uh, the top tier of the Sir Trevor Brookings stand, away to our left-hand side. The lower tier, on the whole, left empty. It, uh, it is a day when, in the past, passions have boiled over. Both clubs appealing for calm ahead of this derby encounter today. It's been a quick start. 
Well, that's what he expects, passion from both sets of players, but some good football as well, and that's very important in a game like this. The challenges are going to fly in, but we need to see some, some cool heads out there. Noble's corner, off the head of Henderson, Ford was scrambling, Tompkins is in the mix. And somehow Millwall have managed to hang on to the ropes there. Julian Faber's effort lacking any real power, but set piece is causing Millwall a problem. Even corners, free kicks, they'll just put the ball in there for Carlton Cole to attack and he might not score, but there's so many West Ham players in there, could easily fall to one of them. the set piece once again it's just knocked in there's no real pace he's just put into the danger zone Henderson does well initially but it's just very hard for Millwall to clear their lines hard for David Ford to actually see the ball at times well he had a spell as a West Ham player David Ford was recommended to the club by one of their former players Kenny Brown so he was signed by Glenn Roder couldn't make uh, an appearance for the senior team and was released by Alan Pardew so uh, he's strolling down memory lane today Abdullah Fai. There's the New Zealand international, Winston Reid. Well, West Ham starting the day, top of the championship, looking up, casting admiring glances at the Barclays Premier League. Millwall are just above the bottom three and staring worryingly down at League One. But at the moment, they just about have enough breathing space between them and the bottom three. They were beaten at home by Watford on Tuesday and Kenny Jackett saw that as a real opportunity missed to try and move away from trouble. Yeah, I'm sure the managers though, both Kenny and Big Sam, will have been concentrating their players on getting themselves right, getting themselves focused for this game. Poor midweek performances, especially as you mentioned for, for West Ham, that surprise 5-1 defeat at Ipswich. They just need to put that game right really, but you've got a big derby, you've got again, ambitions to maybe get out of the championship or stay in it. It's very difficult to, for the players to really concentrate on one game, but they have to do their best. Listen, big imposing figure up front for Millwall. This is done. Henderson again is the target. In a battle with Winston Reid. Andy Keogh, plenty of endeavour about Keogh, that's what he gives you. Well, that's the link up they're looking for. The Forward ball to the target man Henderson and Andy Keogh, he is tireless, he works so hard for the team. Just uh, Harry's defenders as he does here, picks the ball up, you've got to take a chance when he picks the ball up on the byline. You've got to try and make a move for him. Henderson awaiting his big moment here, done. is once again in the mix, it's turned on by Trotter. Another glimmer of an opportunity there for Millwall. Shane Lowry was waiting to pounce. Oh, it wasn't the greatest corner. It falls to Lowry at the near post. There's just so many bodies in there. It's a good challenge, actually. Is it to, it's Winston Reid who actually slides to ground and makes the block. Foul by Carlton Cole. Kenny Jacket will be absolutely delighted with that. What, seven, eight minutes into a big derby game away from home? The pressure on his side, but they've had bags of the ball and they forced Millwall, uh, they forced West Ham back, sorry, and created one or two opportunities already. Henderson. This is Trotter. He was hoping that Henderson would take the ball with him. Crunching challenge uh, between Nolan and Smith. And Kevin Nolan is sent off. A straight red for the West Ham United captain. Well, Mike Jones, the referee, is uh, partial to the odd red card. Five already this season in the 18 games that he's officiated. And he's absolutely sure as soon as the challenge went in, he went to his pocket and the red card was out. We'll have to have a, a good look at this. There's so many talking points around challenges these days. But it breaks and Kevin Nolan makes the challenge. And and it's two-footed, I think that's the thing that makes the referee's mind up. He goes in for this challenge two-footed there, and it is dangerous, it's reckless, and you can see why the referee has sent him off for that. And we're going to look at the referee's position as well, he's looking right down the barrel at that, and you can see Kevin Nolan's body language as he makes that challenge. 
West Ham United have lost their captain within the opening 10 minutes. Remember the rules are reckless, it's a yellow, excessive force, it's red. Mike Jones saw that as excessive force. Well, when you're in Kevin Nolan's position, you see the Millwall player go to ground and he's, he's prone, so it's, a, it's going to be a dangerous chance. You can see Jack Smith goes to ground, his legs outstretched. So you as a tackler, you have to be, really have to be careful in how you challenge an opponent. And you can see that is a dangerous challenge and it's definitely the fact that he's gone in with two feet. And the referee is in the perfect position to make that spot. In this current climate, Andy, why would Kevin Nolan have made that decision, that kind of challenge in this kind of game in the opening 10 minutes? Well, it is strange and it's a derby game, maybe. We saw it in the, uh, the Man City, Man United, Vincent Company's challenge. Maybe you feel you can get away with challenges like that, but it's only maybe two or three seconds. Kevin Nolan definitely has the chance to tackle differently. He decides to go in like that and you run the risk. And it's no surprise to me the referee sent him off. Jack Smith was the injured party, he's back on his feet now and he will be back with us shortly. Meanwhile, Millwall have this free kick. Trauma once again between these two. Kevin Nolan sent off, West Ham down to 10 and a real chance for Millwall to take advantage. Well, absolutely, we have to see maybe how Big Sam uh, reshapes his side, whether he decides on making a substitution and, and shoring things up a little bit. But when challenges are made like that, Gary, I tend to look at it and turn it round and say if it's Kevin Nolan lying on the ground and Smith comes in, and challenges like that, would he be happy? And I don't think Kevin Nolan would be. We have our first big talking point of the weekend. Long from Artule Fai. Jack Collison winning that particular battle, but illegally so, and a free kick to Millwall. in here, the ball had bounced out of play before Collison made the challenge. So it's all about now how uh, West Ham reshape here, without their captain, it's so important to what West Ham United do. And how encouraged now will Millwall be by that incident? Of course we don't like to see players sent off and close don't want to see one of the opposition players sent off, but it's happened now. We should see how Millwall approach this as well, do they? Take a few more risks having the extra man now. There's Carton Cole. Julian Fobo waiting in the middle. Cole tries to find Fobo. Nice idea, but comfortable for four. Oh, it's hard work from Carlton Cole as well to block the clearance and then we can see what he's trying to do. Just pick out Fobo, who made a really good run, 30 yards or more, to try and get in at the near post. These two rivals stand just five miles away from each other in the capital. It's uh, 20 minutes on the Jubilee line from deepest Bermondsey to West Ham. So much history between the Millwall with the first ever team on the guest list at Upton Park back in 1904. And this game so far, it's uh, started in a, a bright manner. And West Ham have now lost their captain Kevin Nolan to a red card and Henderson's after this but he's offside. Well, West Ham have to get themselves sorted, we're losing Kevin Nolan, there's acres of space in the middle of the park and that's what Liam Trotter makes good use of here, just Henderson, does he go a little bit too soon? He does, just half a yard offside. Yeah, he's had a lively start, Darius Henderson, he's scored almost half of Millwall's goals this season. Kenny Jackett says there has been a, an over-reliance on Darius Henderson, that's why he's brought in Andy Keogh to try and uh, share the goal-scoring burden. Looking to turn the ball on to Jimmy Abdu. Hooked away nicely by Collison. There's Andy Keogh again. He's been heavily involved from the start here. Now Trotter. Keogh, Henderson. Nicely worked by Millwall. Three waiting in the middle, including Feeney, who almost reached it. Oh, this is fabulous build-up play from Millwall, getting some width in their game. This is going to happen as... West Ham keep it nice and tight, they try and defend the centre of the field, wonderful ball in slight deflection, and Joey O'Brien, right back on the cover, does just about enough, gets his body in the way of Feeney, 
as he looks to break into the uh, six-yard box. Millwall attacking the end where the 1,500 or so fans are housed. And in front of those fans, Liam Feeney will take this corner kick. We've already had a, a couple of glimmers of Robert Green's goal of Millwall from such positions. So Feeney's delivery, thumping header away by Cole. Held on his way by Julian Fober. Jack Smith, who's being jeered by the West Ham fans for uh, having the temerity to be on the end of Kevin Nolan's challenge. Uh, I'm not sure there's an awful lot he could have done about it. He genuinely played the ball and could have been seriously injured. And you just his responsibility on opponents when they go into challenge, and I'm sure you know, he certainly didn't make a meal of it. He was, uh, he was on the end of a really nasty one. Smith again. Battle with Fober, free kick West Ham's way. Well, this is what West Ham are going to have to do. Fober and, and Cole are going to have to work very hard up there and try and maybe draw free kicks from the Millwall defenders just as they've done there. Then they can get players forward, get themselves set, and get some decent set piece delivery. Well, Mark Noble is capable of a, a devilish delivery. Everybody back for Millwall. West Ham, of course, no longer have the, uh, the goal threat of Kevin Nolan after his early red card here. Tompkins forward, as is Abdullah Fai, Winston Reid, they're all in a mix. Swung in high by Nolan, Tompkins with the rise, and again it's comfortable for David Ford in the Millwall goal. If you needed a reminder of just how difficult this league is to get out of in the right direction, then we had it on Tuesday with West Ham being taken apart, 5-1 by Ipswich at Portman Road. Sam Allardyce labelled it a bad night at the office. This really is the league where any team can beat the other. Ipswich hadn't won in seven. Andy Keogh is the uh, the man down this time for Millwall. Yeah, the referee's got to keep a cool head, of course. A red, an early red card, and there's nothing in that at all. Collison just comes across, hardly catches Keogh. The referee really has to keep a sharp eye. Jimmy Abdu. Keogh. Sam Allardyce has just walked back to his uh, dugout, shook his head, he's still ruining the sending off of Kevin Nolan, you'd imagine. And he's a manager who loves these statistics. And he will uh, tell you how many times West Ham have won with ten men. And how it's best to combat eleven when you have ten. He's a very methodical manager as the, uh, the West Ham boss. Well, things do tend to be tight here at Upton Park this season. Nine of the 13 games here have been decided by the odd goal, and in six of those nine games, it's West Ham who've come out on top, so they're quite capable of keeping it tight and, and nicking a winner. Trotter, who is the captain at the moment in the absence of Paul Robinson. That was a, a lunging challenge from McCartney. So, big game here, big game later on in the Empower Championship as well. Birmingham City against Southampton, live, 5 o'clock, Sky Sports HD2. Both are waiting for West Ham to slip up here. That was a good challenge from Mark Noble. He was left floored by Dunn. Jack Smith, who's been playing at left back in recent weeks. Interesting that Kenny Jacket did decide to match up. He's a very much a 4-4-2 man. Yeah, and the teams that I've seen 
Millwall play this season, it's very much 4 4 2, certainly at home, but away from home when you're playing West Ham, who can tinker with their formation, it totally makes sense. And they did make a good start to this game, but the sending off, the fact you've got an extra man does change everything, and that's why I'm sure he'll just be maybe feeling his way the next 10 minutes or so, seeing how the game really pans out, then he can make some decisions about whether he reshapes his team to go for the win. Well, they started off brightly here, Millwall, and they have continued in the same manner. This is Barron. Jack Smith. Now Liam Trotter. Try to cut her way through. Feeney has Barron on the outside here. Barron being a match strike for strike by Fober. Well, this is fantastic work from Julian Fober because West Ham they keep nice and solid. They don't get pulled out of position. And Fober working all the way back, tracking the left back Barron all the way to his own byline. Fantastic play by the midfielder. Well, when he swept into power here, Sam Allardyce knew that he had to get West Ham back into the Barclays Premier League, very much at the first time of asking. He will back himself in any managerial position. He doesn't lack self-confidence or self-belief. His record tells you he improves almost every team he manages. Miscue from McCartney. No surprise really that Millwall have taken the game to West Ham. Having that extra man, they're going to force the, the ten-man home side to uh, do a bit more defending than they would like to do. Noble. Abdullah Fai. Slip from Phobos, the managed to get his head on it. So to Baron for Millwall. Has been a season of struggle for Millwall. Last season, the, uh, the top ten was their home, they eventually finished in ninth position. The sequel hasn't been as good, they made the worst start to a league campaign since the 70s. Found a little bit of form in November time, but it's been patchy ever since. Pushing the back on Henderson. Well, it certainly was a foul, but you're right, Millwall have struggled, just a, a lack of goals. Apart from that man, Darius Henderson, has certainly found the target regularly, but the rest of the side, they need to start chipping in with a few goals. If, they are to save themselves this season. Liam Trotter does a really good job in that Millwall engine room. He is destined for bigger things, according to his manager. Well, he believes his team overachieved last season, finishing in ninth position which is why it's been difficult to follow it up this campaign. Plus, of course, they lost the goals to Steve Morrison. After his move to Norwich City, Darius Henderson with those big boots to fill. And he's done it capably so far this campaign, 16 to his name. But still, Morrison has been a, a big loss. Ward in a battle with Fober. Millwall's form being patchy in the last few months. It's actually been quite consistent of late. They've lost four of the last five. That's what they need to turn around. Won one of those, which was their last away day against Barnsley. Good win that day at Oakwell. Too deep from Fober. 
Johnson manages to retrieve the situation. Parton Cole is waiting. Looked like a nudge from Parton Cole. Referee was happy with it. Faubert, Cole gets something on it. There certainly, certainly seemed to be a nudge that ball back in from Collison, who did really well to keep the ball in play. Carlton Cole to me. Seemed just a nudge a defender. The referee didn't pick it up, and West Ham nearly profited. Julian Fober does much prefer this position he's playing in today, a little bit further forward down the right-hand side. Joey O'Brien is the man who's at right back, and good to see Joey O'Brien on a football field again after all of the injuries he's been through. Here he is. West Ham team just need their fans to stay with them here, just be a little bit patient, they are down to ten men. Collison trying to latch onto that, there's too much on it from Noble. Well, this is the ball in from Collison, he does really well, keeps it in play. Just lumps it back into the penalty, I'm sure there's a foul there on Scott Barron from Carlton Cole, but once again, once Cole's in there, and Noble's trying to get on the end of things as well, very difficult for that Millwall defence. Henderson is on the move here, so too is Abdoulaye Fai, good block on the Senegalese defender. Well, because they've got the extra man, Millwall, they can commit bodies forward, and when Darius Henderson picks this ball up, there's only Andy Keogh making a move into the penalty area. One or two of the midfielders need to, to back up the play. Can they make one of these set-pieces count? Feeney's delivery, comfortably away this time by Carl Smith, who mentioned before he can't hit them. Miscued that time. Off the head of Noble. It's fast and frenetic out there. It's Derby Day in the East End. Smith. Now Jimmy Apte. Feeney, it's opened up for him. Feeney taking aim and finding Robert Green. Well, that's a decent strike, but Rod Green, you really need to concentrate as this ball skips off the surface. West Ham just struggled to clear their lines, and Feeney on his favoured right foot strikes it well, maybe a touch off. West Ham player as well, and the keeper has to concentrate, watch that ball all the way onto his chest, and good save. That's Carlton Cole, now West Ham's second longest serving player, just behind Mark Noble. Looks like he'll have a, a new strike partner or two when uh, Nicky Maynard is introduced, he's on the bench today. Certainly had his first share of strike partners down the years in uh, Clarence and Blue, Carlton Cole. And as the ever busy Mark Noble keeps West Ham ticking in that engine room. McCartney. Well, West Ham are certainly being positive every time they go forward. The fullbacks, either O'Brien or McCartney, are, are pressing on down the flank, so they're not just sitting back looking to soak up pressure and play on the break. Noble. Julian Fober again dashing in for this right hand side. Looking to try and uh, add support to the West Ham front line of just Carton Cole right now. Tompkins is playing in this midfield role this afternoon. Don't see him really getting a chance to settle on the ball right now. Noble is becoming more and more of an influential figure in this game. Collison. Seen off by Dunn. One is either side here for Trotter, Keogh. And this is Henderson, and Robert Green was there to greet him. Oh, that's great anticipation from the West Ham goalkeeper. He doesn't come off his line here. Darius Henderson probably has a great opportunity, but on the break, it's Millwall catching West Ham call, but the keeper does really well, comes at just the right time, and that's a, a really good claim. And he's getting back to the form, which saw him win England caps, Robert Green. He's rebuilt his confidence. Last season in the Barclays Premier League, he was facing an average of 19 shots at him per match. It's Joey O'Brien! Plenty of power in that. 
Oh, talked about the West Ham fullbacks getting forward, and there's Joey O'Brien, the right back on the edge of the, the Millwall penalty area. Really brave from West Ham. He does well to pick the ball up in the first place, and there's nothing else on for him. Just really slices across the ball. Too much elevation on it, just sits up as he strikes it. And that takes it over the bar. Well, they saw their captain red carded in the opening 10 minutes. They have responded. They have been positive when they've had their opportunity so far, West Ham. But it's been a good first half hour, too, by Millwall. A very watchable game so far. Henderson. Noble. That's Collison. Alan Dunn came through the academy at Millwall. They are a team who spend money when they can, backed by their American chairman, John Berylson. It's on a, in a week of transfers, still the record fee is £800,000, which they paid for a former West Ham man, Paul Goddard. And that's why Kenny Jacket believes that last season they were fighting above their weight and making the top ten of the championship. Tompkins. Boba winning another header, Barron wasn't too sure where the ball was. Martin Cole is lurking in the middle. Faubert, well, he did brilliantly to create the space. It was a, a slip by Barron. Well, Faubert couldn't find anyone in Claret and Blue. Tompkins. This time looking to try and take control of this game. Noble, he's everywhere right now. O'Brien, you know who. This is McCartney. Left by Collison. It's Collison again, and blocked that time by Ward. Helped on its way by Barrett. The pressure just beginning to build on that Millwall penalty area. Noble. Noble tries to reach it, and he wins the free kick. And he deserves a timeout right now because he has been terrific in the last 10 minutes or so. Absolutely, a really good period of possession for the home side. And when you lose a player, it's up to the other players, and maybe just one in particular to step up to the plate. And Mark Noble is absolutely everywhere. He's just eased out of that. And this is a good opportunity. It's a fair distance out, but at least the big lads can come up from the back. Well, Millwall not taking any chances. They build a three man wall. A long way out, Mark Noble standing over it. Tompkins is forward again. Noble was seeking out Tompkins away by turn. Terrific again from Mark Noble. 24 years of age now, made his debut just over seven and a half years ago. West Ham through and through. Jack Smith. Alan Dill. Feeney's delivery was uh, bright and inventive. Keo is done on the spin. Now it's Jimmy Abdu. 
Madness and the meat and the sandwich. He looks appealingly towards the referee and gets nothing. Yeah, there's no foul for me in this. The defenders do really well. They just get their bodies in the way. And Henderson isn't even reaching this ball. It's over hit. He isn't going to get his head on it. The fullback and the centre half combine really well just to ease him out of it. When you have a front man like Darius Henderson, it can become uh, a little bit obvious. Always a temptation to play the long ball towards him. West Ham moving in, and Julian Faber was almost moving on to that. No, he just simply couldn't make contact because this ball is really fizzed in. He does well, he gets across the fullback, he's first to this ball. Just needs to get some kind of contact on. It's not easy because it's coming at some pace. And that could easily just come off his shin or catch an instep and fly past David Ford. He just uh, can't get to the ball soon enough. Well, this is really impressive from the home side. They're struggling in terms of possession, but they're creating opportunities. Hit the target on a couple of occasions as well. When you're down to ten men, it's never easy, but West Ham are making a good fist of it. If you missed it, Kevin Nolan, the man who was sent off for a, uh, a reckless lunge on Jack Smith, who's on the ball here. And that came in the tenth minute, the records for the West Ham captain. Again, Henderson is the target. Again, he's being watched by Julie Fai. He wins a corner this time. He talked about Millwall maybe being drawn into playing this ball time and again, but he gets himself in between defenders here, Henderson. And Fai is underneath the ball, so Henderson is favourite to get ahead on this, which he does, and it is a corner, and that's the position Henderson wants to be in between defenders. Only Ricky Lambert and Ross McCormack have scored more goals in the championship this season than Darius Henderson. Does Feeney have up his sleeve this time? Now well, there's a scramble in there, the referee I think saw a handball. Just so many bodies in there, fabulous ball in again, pace, it's nice and flat, keeper can't come for it. And the referee I'm presuming sees a handball somewhere in there as it's flicked up, is it Henderson, high foot maybe? There's high foot, possibly handball as well. High boot from the big man. He's a good guy, Kenny Jackett. He's the kind of manager that players love playing for. He's honest, he says it how it is. He was hugely respected at Manchester City when he was reserve coach there. This chairman calls him one of the most underrated managers in football. He's got a job on his hands right now, making sure that Millwall stay in the championship. McCartney's cross, defended by Darren Ward. Could want for Joey O'Brien to control, control it, he does. Oh, we notice that West Ham are starting to create a few more opportunities as well, and that possession start is starting to move in their favour as well. Even though they're down to 10 men, they've got some good players still out there, and if they start to get a bit more of the ball, a few more chances might be created for them. Another thing that's changed out there, Andy, is that Millwall have now gone 4-4-2. Jack Smith has moved to left-back. Scott Barron ahead of him, which is how we thought they would start, and Keogh and Henderson in attack, so Millwall have now gone 4-4-2. Well, what they're trying to do is get some support up to Henderson, that's maybe understandable, maybe it's the plan all the, all the way along, they didn't expect a red card, of course, but if they needed to maybe chase a game, they could have done what they've done. Now they maybe feel that they can play with two up front rather than Keogh just in behind Henderson. playing on the left-hand side of midfield. Over the head of Henderson this time, and it was Keogh who was setting himself. Feeney. Andy Keogh, blocked by McCartney. Here's the Welsh international, Jack Collison. Well, most records say that Millwall have never won at Upton Park. Millwall fans will tell you they did. 1987, full members cut, remember that? On the back foot here though, Carlton Cole. 
first real sight of goal with a left foot of his. Oh, it's not easy for him, it's all his own work as well, there's no one around him, he's got no one to play to. Just battles his way to the ball, holds players off, there's at least two defenders around him. It's never easy to hit the target when there's so many uh, defenders in such close attendance. Yeah, full Members Cup 1987, Millwall won here, it's often forgotten that. But not by those from Bermondsey. Noble now playing left back. He has been everywhere in this first half. Henderson will give chase to this. Away by Joey O'Brien. Now a real race on between Smith and Fober. And Fober has got the better of Jack Smith. Martin Cole, the only man up with Julian Fober. And as a result, nowhere to go for West Ham. Done. This is Noble. Tompkins, West Ham thankful that they held on to him. Newcastle United had a, a couple of bids turned down for James Tompkins, who signed a new deal with West Ham. Says he feels the responsibility to get them back into the Barclays Premier League. Fober. Nicely moved by West Ham and O'Brien caught by Barrett. Oh, it's a fantastic bit of interplay between Fober and O'Brien, who has continued to get forward from right back. And I don't know if he's going to have a quick word with Barron here, but it's brilliant play. Fober, a little ball around the corner for the right back, who just tricks. Barron just steps away from him and certainly clicked. West Ham hunting the crucial breakthrough before half-time. Millwall with everybody back here. A scrap going on between Dunn and uh, Tompkins. <laughs> Mike Jones is having to have eyes everywhere here. Round two now between those two. Noble's free kick, off the head of Henderson. This is Collison. Still plenty forward in Claret and Blue, amongst them Carlton Cole. Nice defensive job from Darius Henderson. And the keeper yet to be really tested in this match. Been a couple of sights of goal for both sides. Nil-nil as we head towards the break. The big talking points, the sending off of Kevin Nolan. It's his decision, and Andy, the right decision. Well, for me it was, because it's such a hot topic at the moment, the way that players are challenging, whether it be two-footed, certainly whether it's reckless, and it doesn't matter whether you play the ball, if you catch the player and go in, as Kevin Nolan did, you run the risk, and the referee was in a, a great spot to actually pick it up. Since that sending off, since that wobble, West Ham have steadied the ship, they found their feet. And they're not playing like a team who are without their captain right now. Kio. Alan Dunn. This is Liam Feeney. A few years ago, was playing his trade in non-league football. Adele Fai and uh, Joy O'Brien just getting in each other's way slightly, and Adele Fai taking charge of the situation. Feeney to run at McCartney. Four waiting for Millwall in the middle, repelled by Reid. 
This is done. Millwall looking for a big finish to this first half. Probably the first mistake of the afternoon from Noble. Yeah, having changed to 4-4-2, it's important for Millwall. They do get the ball out to Barron down the left and to Liam Feeney down that right-hand side as he just did there. He can run at George McCartney and give the left fullback lots of problems. Darren Ward. see just why Millwall have bought him for that industry. His goals record of late hasn't been the greatest, but there's plenty of work about him. As is this man, Henderson. Trotter. This is Scott Bauer. We'll have two additional minutes at the end of the first half. Lowry's ball, Henderson's flick. Who will be there happier as we head towards half time? Well, Kenny Jackett, on a few occasions, has been disappointed with the way his side have given the ball away cheaply. With having the extra man, they've got to keep possession better. And I'm sure in the, uh, in the dressing room at half time, he was saying just that to his players. We've got the extra man, we've got to make it count in this second half because Big Sam's side, we know they've got character, lots of experience in their ranks as well. And on the bench, he can throw a couple of uh, hot strikers on as well if he needs to really press on and win the game. So it's all to play for in the second half, but two very different team talks from the managers. Chance here for West Ham United to change the scoreline before the break. <laughs> Fight in by Noble, Reed met it, Cotton Cole! The 10 men of West Ham break through just before half time. Big goal for Cotton Cole. The championship leaders show their class. Well, this is going to change the managerial half-time team talks for sure because it's all about the quality of the ball in from Mark Noble. He provided for Collison at Ipswich for the goal they scored there. He whips this in with pace. Winston Reid causes the problems, but Carlton Cole is such a handful. He's just too strong for, for Darren Ward. He wants to get to that ball, and once he gets his head on it, David Ford can't react quick enough. He has to do all the work himself because the ball is dropping from a great height. He has to provide all the power and head it goalwards and he does that brilliantly a very very important goal for West Ham his first goal in six games and it has come on Derby Day in the East End of London West Ham United lead at the break Carlton Cole writing the headlines in the first half with a header right at the end of the first 45. And that after West Ham United had seen their captain Kevin Nolan sent off early on for a two-footed lunge on Jack Smith. The Hammers lead at the break. It's West Ham United 1, Millwall 0. Well, West Ham United making a change at the break. Matt Taylor has uh, come on in place of Jack Collison. A little bit more width down that left-hand side. Martella still getting back match fit after missing a, a large chunk of the winter schedule. So, we've had two big moments so far. Carlton Cole's goal just before the break and Kevin Nolan's red card. West Ham in front. Millwall, though, can take some encouragement from what they did in the first half of the first half. Millwall with Liam Feeney down, but let's go down pitch side, let's hear from Anthony Burton, he's been talking to Sam Allardyce. Yes, Gary, just had a good chat with Sam uh, in terms of the tackle, spoke to him right after the first half and he, he needed to have a look on the monitors, he's done that at half-time, he says in today's rules, he accepts it probably has to be a red card, but for him that kind of tackle is a good old-fashioned challenge, but he does accept at this time you pretty much have to give it as a red. He did make the point that this is a Premier League referee, looking at a championship game he wondered if that had an effect on it and in terms of the substitution he wanted to do that just to try and balance up this midfield to have a natural left footer on the left side rather than Jack Collison a right footed player playing on the left so he's tried to give the team a little bit more balance being down to 10 men 
and he accepts that it probably was a red card under today's rules. So, they are the thoughts of Sam Allardyce at the break, and uh, you wouldn't argue with those thoughts, Andy? I think it's good for a manager to come out and actually say, yeah, one of my players is, is guilty of making a challenge which you simply can't make in, in modern football. Lots of managers talk about not seeing incidents, but Sam had a good look at it and is, is back to what really we said, the boys in the studio have said, and it's not a type of challenge you want to see in football, it's dangerous. Well, Liam Feeney has been let off the pitch for treatment, he will be back with us shortly, in fact he's back on now as... Matt Taylor tries to make uh, an impression on this game, it's just behind Julian Faubert. He has been a big miss whilst he's been out injured, Matt Taylor, he's already got six assists to his name this season for West Ham. Lasted uh, just over an hour against Ipswich on Tuesday. And the battle there with Alan Dunn. West Ham United starting the day, two points ahead of second place Southampton, three points ahead of third place Cardiff City. Big, big game. Well, it's no surprise that Sam has looked to his bench to balance the side up with Matt Taylor down the left, but when you're down to ten men, you do need to use your substitutes well, and very difficult for the players out there because they've got to, of course, cover a lot of extra ground. Well, this time it was a challenge by Lowry on Matt Taylor. Referee just needs to keep a lid on this. Oh, he does, he's been at the centre of attention, the referee, and again, that's a full bullet challenge, that's a, a derby challenge, really, but looking at this, as Lowry comes and approaches the ball, he plays the ball, and he protects himself, he does follow through, I'm not saying that he doesn't, and it is dangerous again, and the referee convinced this time that that's a, that's a challenge you can give it a free kick for, actually, the free kick's gone Millwall's way as well. Neighbourly love. Abdullah Fai, Carlton Cole, the goal scorer, linking up with Noble. Arguably the, uh, the star man for West Ham in that first half. Free kick Millwall's way, Sam Allardyce is raging. West Ham no back in business. Cole, the target here, being watched by Darren Ward. How did Millwall go about the second half? Trying to battle against the Temer, which can be tricky as we know. Well, they changed their formation, of course, to a 4 4 2. They need Feeney and Barron to get involved in the game. But the thing is, actually, uh, conceding the goal should really have made their minds up. They need to be more positive. They looked a little bit uncertain, even though they changed their formation. There's a yellow card coming up here. Henderson just jumps up, the arm is raised. And that's why the free kick is given. You can't raise your elbow like that, dangerous again. But they really have to be just more positive, Millwall. Not easy. Away from home, the league leaders, but a goal down. Uh, really got to take the game to, to West Ham now. Well, goals have been a problem for them. They failed to score in seven of their last nine. That's why they took the plunge with Andy Keogh. Come on! Well, his goal record hasn't been great of late. But they need a goal here. West Ham with the all-important goal. McCartney, Julian Faber! It was almost perfect. Well, Julian Faubert is so unlucky because this is a great ball in from George McCartney and Faubert does the right thing. It's not a powerful header, he just tries to guide it, use the pace on the ball to glance it over the keeper. So unlucky. Well, he's only ever scored two goals for West Ham. This was so close to being a third. And McCartney's only got Faubert to actually pick out and he does that brilliantly. But just watch the way he just lets this ball brush across his forehead and then just tries to glance it towards that top right-hand corner, he's unlucky, he doesn't give West Ham a two-goal lead. That's Carlton Cole. Joey O'Brien. He's cornered Joey O'Brien, but he's won a corner. Well, Julian Faubert has covered so much ground in this game, in attack and in defence, great pick from McCartney. It's a wonderful header, he deserves better. Another six inches low, and that would have been 2-0. More defending here for Millwall to do. Get up, get up. David Ford, safe handling. Oh, the ball's gone all the way through, that's a Matt Taylor. 
Not the best defending from Millwall. And the two centre-halves, Lowry and Ward, having a look at each other. West Ham haven't had too many chances to relax in games this season. Uh, victories on the whole have been by a, a one-goal margin. Every game has been a, a battle. They've had to fight right to the end. Can take its toll at times. Liam Feeney. Trotter. Fober. Surging run again from Chilean Fober, and he gets a free kick. And this could be a yellow for Lowry. It will be a yellow for the former Villa man. Oh, this just underlines once again how much ground uh, Julian Faubert has covered. Picks the ball up, looks to drive at the heart of that Millwall defence. It's certainly a trip from Lowry, but Faubert has been outstanding so far. Well, he's had a, an eventful five years at West Ham. Julian Faubert, a serious injury, a top ten finish, relegation, a loan spell at Real Madrid, out of the picture a year ago. Being one of the key men here this afternoon. Is that having a tough time, a lone spell at Real Madrid? <laughs> Ups and downs of the football world. <laughs> Taylor and Noble standing over this. Deadly Matt Taylor can be from these situations. It is Matt Taylor, and the wall does its job. In particular, Henderson, who I felt the full force of that. Fobo winning another header, Winston Reid, who remained forward. This way, but a reminder that West Ham are down to 10. I was just about to say, Big Sam must be delighted the way that his side have started this second half because his goalkeeper Rodri has had very little to do. West Ham have pulled out their other side with the extra man. That's a little known fact, but he actually played for Millwall three decades ago. Signed by Paul Anderson, sold by George Graham. is Feeney. Trotter. Clean challenge from Reed. Now Carlton Cole. Matt Taylor pushing Dunn back. Trying to slip it through the Carlton Cole. This time again taking the fight to Millwall. Anderson. Miss Smith. Jimmy Abdul, key member of this Millwall team. Taylor, oh, the sloppy head of Robert Green on his toes. Hasn't had too much to do in the West Ham goal so far. It's been poor, the possession from Millwall, two, three, four passes OK, but then they look to play into Henderson or Keogh and they give the ball away cheaply and this now comes straight down the other end at them. Stragon from Cole. Oh, West Ham have stayed on the shoulder of pace at Southampton and when the Saints slipped, West Ham made their move. They've gone from being the hunters so being the hunted now, it's a, a different kind of psychology when you're there at the top. They have been level with Southampton a few times, but then slips. However, they are determined this time to cement their place at the top. Millwall making a change, and it's Harry Kane who is coming on. On loan for Tottenham, had started every game since making the loan switch. Scored a, a couple of goals so far.
So, the, uh, the man coming off. Eventually, is uh, Scott Barron. Scott Barron makes way for Harry Kane. So it's uh, a positive change for Kenny Jacket. Yeah, they try playing 4-4-2 and trying to get Barron in the game. Down that left-hand side, it's not really worked, so it's understandable why Kenny has sent on another striker to try and get back in the game. Well, when Harry Kane has played for Millwall, he has created chances. The problem is taking them. Can't remember too many clear-cut chances for Millwall in that first half. Oh, that's it. And in this second half, they need to create one or two, and if they do come along, they need to take them. That's a problem they've had all season, is scoring goals away from home, only 10 in, what, 13 and a half games. They need to be better than that. Trotter. This is Smith looking to get the better of Joey O'Brien. Another feather by O'Brien. This is Julio Fober. Miss Cuban Tompkins. Smith there is Harry Kane, London born. He's played a few games for Tottenham this season, made his debut in the Europa League against Hearts. Sent out on loan to get some first team football. Julian Fober, oh, he was onside but couldn't welcome the ball in. He has been a threat this afternoon. Oh, this is a fabulous crossfield pass from. George McCartney, he picked him out for that header that hit the crossbar and he was in acres of space, Faubert, again. Had a fantastic forward run, just couldn't get the ball out of his feet ahead of him. Henderson. Looking to link up with Jimmy out too. This is Taylor. He's refereed this game well so far, Mike Jones. He's got the, the big, big decision absolutely spot on. The sending off of Kevin Nolan. Can be a, a combustible atmosphere when these two meet, as we know. And so far, he's kept a, a firm grip on this game. Feeney, the challenge by McCartney. throw, Henderson trying to get to it, defended by, first of all, Adelaide Fire, then helped on its way by Reed. that's Taylor, now Carton Cole. This time looking to break on the counter-attack. Remember the Hammers do have new signings, Nicky Maynard and Ricardo Vaste in reserve, should they need him. No Ravel Morrison, he's not in the squad here today. The owners have uh, backed their manager with cash from their own pockets in January. <laughs> Feeney with the tricks. Decent delivery too, and Green was grasping at thin air. Well, this is exactly what Millwall needs to do, get the ball out to Liam Feeney so he can Run out of the fullback or Matt Taylor, who's dropped in from midfield. It's a cracking ball in. The goalkeeper can't reach it. Just no one's taken it. A real chance at the far post.
Tompkins the target here. Will be a corner to West Ham. James Tompkins will settle for this, just wrestling for the ball. It just comes off the head of Darren Ward, just brushes the head, and West Ham will uh, gladly take the set piece. Now, oh, set piece is always a strong suit. Uh, whichever club Sam Allardyce is in charge of. And they've already scored from one this afternoon. Mark Noble that corner, David Ford was in a real battle. And the uh, referee wasn't happy with the challenge upon the Millwall goalkeeper. Well, when Sam Allardyce took charge, the owners told him he had to get his promotion back to the Barclays Premier League. At the moment, he is delivering. David Sullivan is uh, right up there with one of the busiest phones in football come every transfer window as it would have been in the last few weeks, but uh, I think he can afford the bill. Yeah, certainly looking to get West Ham back in the Premier League. Big Sam here to do that job. The Academy of Football, of course. West Ham, the fans like to see an attractive brand of football, but you need to be effective in the Championship if you are to get promoted. And that's exactly what West Ham have been this season. So it's a little prickly, Sam Allardyce, when you mention uh, the history of West Ham and the tradition of football. He's always uh, tagged with a direct game. That's Keogh's direct cross. Oh, that was a vital touch from Tompkins. Harry Kane was bearing down on goal. Oh, that's brilliant work from James Tompkins. His first thought when this ball is played for Andy Keogh is to get back and try and get on the end of this cross. And he just gets a touch on that to take it away. And the Millwall attack at the far post. Brilliant challenge. And there's a centre half by trade, and you can see here his defensive instincts come to the fore, watching that ball all the way and then sliding in at just the right time. Well, he gave his manager a big boost by signing a new deal, James Tompkins, a local boy born in Basildon. He wants to play his part in West Ham returning to the top division. And rubbing shoulders with football's A-listers once more. They are on course here, if it remains this way, then they will be going five points clear of Southampton who play Birmingham City, which you can see live later. Jimmy Abtu. Uh, could well be a nervous day, a nervy day for Kenny Jackett if it remains this way. Watching the results come in later. Remember, five points, the difference between Millwall and the bottom three. It's going to be a nervy end to the season for Millwall. It's absolutely sure. Looking at the fixtures as well, they've got to play all of the current Bottom three away from home, so they've got some tough tasks ahead. Alan Dunn. Harry Kane. Feeney. Now Jimmy Abdu, Millwall tiptoeing towards the West Ham box. Trotter. A thumping challenge this time from Joey O'Brien. No more just stealing to enjoy a little bit of possession again. Henderson on the spin and then bullied off the ball by Abdule Fine. But this is a chance for Trotter! Millwall strike back and silence the East End. It's 1-1. Well, this is a stunning strike from Liam Trotter, but you've got to credit to Darius Henderson for simply keeping this ball in play. He doesn't give it up as Faye just tries to shepherd this ball out. There doesn't seem to be any danger here at all. Faye just tries to get his body across Henderson, doesn't uh, do well enough, but this sits up nicely for Trotter. It's still not an easy finish, but he manages to get over this ball and keep it down, and Rob Green, absolutely no chance, and we've really got a derby on now. Goal number six of the season for Liam Trotter, and it is a massive moment for him, for Millwall, and in the promotion race. And I'll tell you what's so impressive, that ball sits up at 
a fair distance as well. He's a big man, Liam Trotter, but he just leaves the ground to make sure he gets the right to have a contact on the ball. That's a brilliant finish. Well, it looked initially that Abdoulaye Faye had done enough against Darius Henderson. He got himself in between Henderson and the ball, but then Henderson just stuck out the boot and managed to find Trotter, who did the rest. Well, this is the problem you've got when you play against Millwall with Henderson and Keogh. They just don't give anything up, and as a defender, you take a risk allowing that ball to bounce, trying just to shepherd it out. You get it wrong, you can pay a heavy price. Trotter. It's a really good finish from the Millwall captain. Well, they have a good record against West Ham. They are unbeaten in their last seven encounters. Wall's challenge on Carlton Cole, the referee letting play go on, this is McCartney. West Ham looking to respond, but no one in Claret and Blue attacking the far post, and the card is about to be brandished to Darren Ward for that challenge on Carlton Cole. Well, the referee's got this absolutely right, it certainly is a yellow card, it's clumsy from Ward on Cole, but the referee plays the advantage as he should do, he sees the challenge. It is a yellow card, but he does well to let the game flow, and why not as West Ham are breaking forward, in the end it comes to nothing. And he pulls up Darren Ward and shows him that yellow card, which is absolutely right. Here's the spin. And Carlton Cole just nicks the ball away. It's clumsy. It's that left leg of Darren Ward that catches the striker. So Darren Ward, yellow carded. Millwall back level, but with this corner to defend here. Carlton Cole hobbling inside the Millwall penalty area. It's Matt Taylor's corner kick. The goalkeeper's nowhere. Tompkins head out off the line. They were within an ace of taking the lead again. West Ham. Harry Kane to the rescue for Millwall. Ford taken out by Fober. It's fired back in by Reed. The goal is given. West Ham United are back in front. Two minutes packed with drama at Upton Park. Well, this is a big, big talking point because David Ford punches this ball clear. Is he fouled after he makes the punch? The ball comes in, he punches it, he's certainly caught. To me, that's a foul. I'm not sure that this goal should stand at all. It's just lumped into the penalty area. Ford is first to it, clears his line. There's a foul there, clear foul for me. But Winston Reid plays on. That's absolutely the right thing to do. Millwall just stop playing. That's a foul. I don't know how the referee hasn't seen it. And that goal for me shouldn't really stand. Millwall complain, it's goal given, and West Ham are back in front. Well, normally goalkeepers are very well protected, sometimes they're overprotected, free kicks are given when they shouldn't be, and I'm sure David Ward is saying, uh, David Ford, sorry, is saying to the referee, look, I was fouled there, I played the ball, I had only eyes for the ball, Faubert catches me, why is the free kick not given? To me, it seems pretty obvious. Punches it clear, he's certainly fouled. Surely the referee's got to stop the game, he doesn't. And West Ham get a second. Decisions that can change seasons. And it's one of those challenges as well. If you look at Julian Faubert, his body language, he's not looking at the ball, he's just looking at the goalkeeper. The keeper just punches it clear and he's certainly caught and that's a really big talking point. Millwall and certainly feel that hard done by. Well, Fortune certainly wasn't hiding there for West Ham. Millwall continue to argue their case on this near side. West Ham are back in front though. Second goal of the season for Winston Reid. Took aim and he fired into an unguarded net, and that after Harry Kane had come to Millwall's rescue just a few moments before to keep out West Ham. Andy Keogh. Well, they've hit back once. Can they strike again, Millwall? 13 seconds between Harry Kane's goal line rescue and Winston Reid's goal. Well, it was unconvincing from the corner because David Ford got nowhere near the ball when it came in, but he did everything right with that lofted forward ball, punched it clear and should have got the free kick. The wall were level for just over two minutes. 
That's Taylor. Julian Faubert. Well, he's seen his side edge back in front. But should that goal have been given? He certainly didn't think so, judging by his reaction on the sidelines. He's not a man to let the emotions get the better of him, the Millwall boss. Well, they do like a good soap opera in the East End. And it's been a day packed with drama so far here. The early red card for Kevin Nolan. Millwall hitting back, and then within minutes, West Ham making it 2 1. Millwall claiming David Ford had been fouled by Julian Fober. The referee didn't see it that way, though. That's a goal scorer, Reed. Done. Shoots off the challenge of Noble, just behind Keo, or Miss Cuban Tompkins. Henderson, Harry Kane tries to get to it. After they five, make sure he does. Fober. It's a boiling point right now. And they're both on the field and in the stands as well. Everybody really knows we're in for really exciting last, what, 18, 20 minutes of this game. Convinced we've not seen the end of the scoring. Jacket says it's days such as these that Millwall have fought so hard for. Promotion by the playoffs in 2010, now rubbing shoulders with West Ham, who are the, the championship's prized scout this season. But they will feel hard done by right now. Millwall. Trying to release Henderson. Martin Cole bearing down on goal, and David Ford gets to it. Andy mentioned the upcoming fixtures for Millwall, that's for West Ham, they've got a home game here against Southampton, Blackpool away, Cardiff away on the horizon. So look to stay in top spot, or certainly in the top two, and automatic promotion places for the Barclays Premier League. They don't want to slip into the playoffs if they can help it. Fober. Julian Fober and Darren Ward making sure the ball didn't reach Carlton Cole. Well, David Ford has obviously continued his process, which is why Mike Jones has had enough. A yellow card for the Millwall goalkeeper. Julian Fober. Henderson. Trying to link up with Keogh. Psychologically, how big a blow is it when you hit back as Millwall did and then within a couple of minutes West Ham have suddenly pulled back in front? Oh, it can be mentally and physically very, very tough to actually take, but when you consider that the goalkeeper you feel is, is fouled as well, it's the injustice that you feel if a, a side he opens you up, scores a terrific goal, it's hard enough to take, but when you feel you should have got a free kick and you still can see, it's even, even harder to take. It's a, a test of character though for Millwall, can they uh, come back for a second time in the game? I think 
Gary O'Neill has just been called back to the West Ham bench. John, that was travelling. Oh, he catches this absolutely beautifully. It's played across the park and no real pressure on him. He decides to let one go and it's maybe, what, a yard or so wide of that right-hand post. But you see Rob Green is scampering across. He's not short. He's pretty much got it covered, but that ball was flying. Final instructions from manager to player, and Gary O'Neill will be on shortly. <laughs> Sign of a, a team strength is always the substitutes bench, and West Ham's bench is ever so strong today. New signings of Nicky Maynard and Ricardo Vazte. Gary O'Neill, plenty of experience about him, he's coming on now. We saw Matt Taylor come on at the start of the second half. change for now. Martin Cole on the toes of David Ford. West Ham United looking for breathing space in this game. The referee just checking that the ball was <laughs> hanging over the corner quadrant. That's all it has to do. And uh, fairly satisfied, he takes his place back on the edge of the penalty area. Not letting anyone get away with anything this afternoon, Mike Jones. Noble's corner, and it was taken away by Henderson from Ford. By back in by Noble, off the head of Carlton Cole. Thumped away this time. How he came with the clearance. No monsters from McCartney, it's turned out to be a good ball for Mark Noble. Matt Taylor, no one at the far post for West Ham. There's Jack Smith. Trotter. Paul no wall level in this game. There's Cole, he's all alone. And he's looking for the cavalry to arrive in the middle. He's found Julian Fober. It's Fober! Well, he just tries to put too much power in this. The angle's against him as well, but great hold up play. Runs the channels really well here, Carlton Cole. And just waits for players to come and support him, which Faubert does once again. Underlining how much ground he's covered, he's there on the spot again. Just a little bit wide for him, goes for power, and he's way off target. He has had a really good day, Julian Faubert. That's his last bit of action of this London derby, as he was placed by Gary O'Neill. Of course, it was Faubert who was involved in the challenge on David Ford, which led to West Ham's second goal. Millwall also making a change. Another lonely from Spurs, Ryan Mason is coming on for them. And Ryan Mason replaces Liam Feeney. He's a wide player, Ryan Mason can play through the middle. But that looks like being a straight swap for Liam Feeney. Millwall with 10 minutes plus stoppage time to save themselves here. Jimmy up to. There's Trotter. Oh, 
So, Super Sunday tomorrow, start to one in the northeast. Newcastle United against Aston Villa live on Sky Sports HD1. And then, around about 10 miles across town from here, it's Chelsea against Manchester United, Sky Sports HD1 from 3.30 and also available on Sky 3D. Kick out there from Abdoulaye Fai. And he is yellow carded. This all came from a really shocking goal kick from Rob Green, really poor and they're all looking to break away. You see there Fai just kicking out, just pulling Henderson to the, the ground, that's why he's been booked. Well, West Ham United have dropped four points late on in games this season. We're into the final eight minutes here. They're looking to try and keep Millwall at arm's length. Smith and Harry Kane standing over this. In by Harry Kane. And it's comfortable for Green to watch fly past his goal. Kane's just trying to catch Rob Green out, he's expecting maybe the keeper to move to his left and then put the ball back where the keeper was standing, but Rob Green saw that was coming and just never moved. Nineteen ninety-one, the last time West Ham beat Millwall in a league game. Frank McAvenny and Trevor Morley, the goal scorer is that day. And they are on course here. Leading by two goals to one. If it remains that way, then the headlines from this game will be about that second goal and should it have been allowed to stand. Ryan Mason shrugged off the ball with ease by Tompkins. How well has he done for you today playing in that midfield role? I've not seen him do that role before, actually, but he's seen that great challenge. He's, defensively, he knows what the job's all about and he'll know when to time his challenges, sometimes stepping out from centre-half into midfield, it's not always easy, you think it might be straightforward and he's had to do a, a lot of hard work in there because that's where West Ham have been short with losing Kevin Nolan. Alan Dunn. Nerves just beginning to show now for West Ham. Southampton are at Birmingham City later, you can see that live. Cardiff City, home to Blackpool, big game there. All were hoping that his side were going to slip up today in this London derby, but at the moment, West Ham are on course to move five points clear at the top. Yeah, that's all that matters to West Ham, picking up the three points and keeping some daylight between themselves and the sides chasing them. Considering the circumstances, they've worked very hard if they do go on to win the game. Jack Smith, Ryan Mason, oh, he's a smuggle the ball through to Henderson, it's Ryan Mason, it's done, kept out by Robert Green, it's a massive save for the West Ham goalkeeper. Oh, when this ball breaks to Allen, I'm not sure whether he uh, really makes his mind up about whether he's really shooting or looking to whip a ball in, as it's played to him, he kind of strikes it with the inside of his foot, Rob Green gets a little bit lucky because it's not the greatest of saves and once he spills it he has to react quickly to uh, claim it the second attempt. Could well have been a crucial moment in the game, that. Carlton Cole with a show of descent to Mike Jones. And as a reward, he is yellow carded. And it's happened on a few occasions, good tussle between Carlton Cole and either Shane Lowry or Darren Ward. Is he doing an awful lot wrong here? Maybe he is a free kick, bit of a nudge in the back, but I'm sure it's just an accumulation. Maybe a word out of place, that's why Cole has been booked. Jimmy up to. Alan Dunn. Trying to give Taylor the slip.
Jimmy up to again. The pressure beginning to build on West Ham. Looks like Vaste will be with us shortly for West Ham United to make his debut. Meanwhile, that's Kane and that's a corner to Millwall. Confirmation of the yellow card for Carlton Cole. He's now racing back to take his place on his defensive station. Millwall hunting a late, late equaliser here. Harry Kane is waiting. But, uh, well, it's headed behind. It could have been cleared maybe a little bit more the other way from Gary O'Neill, but needs must. Another corner to Millwall. It was a horrible ball to deal with for Gary O'Neill because he got himself really the wrong side. He was should have been goal side of the ball, heading it up the field. He got himself caught on the wrong side of the ball and ended up nearly heading it back towards his own goal. Kane playing for Millwall on low for Tottenham. Doesn't go down well here at West Ham. He takes the corner. Robert Green took command. Yeah, there's Land of the Giants in there. You're putting set pieces. You've got to put some pace on it. Keep it flat. Don't encourage the goalkeeper to come and collect. Rob Green, as soon as he sees that ball's got a bit of flight on it, he's out and collected it really well. Have West Ham United done enough here? Remember, Kevin Nolan, their captain, was sent off within the opening 10 minutes. Millwall started off well enough in this game. But the 10 men of West Ham have the lead by two goals to one. That second goal, a real contentious moment. So here's the change, and on comes Ricardo Vaste to make his debut after signing from Barnsley. And off goes Carlton Cole, who has put a real shift in leading the West Ham line today. This was his big, big moment, and he will sleep well tonight. Well, this is a terrific header. You consider how much work he's got to do, not just to get to the ball, but then to power it past David Ford. He's worked very, very hard, and when Kevin Nolan is sent off, he probably knew I'm going to have to play as a lone striker and, and work as hard as he has, and no surprise that he's finally been taken off. Ricardo Vaste, 12 goals in 24 games this season for Barnsley. Sam Allardy says he's now matured as a player. Big Sam took him to Bolton as a 16-year-old. Darren Ward, whose brother Elliot used to play for West Ham. Now at Norwich. Helped West Ham win promotion to the Barclays Premier League last time around. Trotter's flick. Keogh beaten to it by Reid, who, as it stands, is the match winner here. Now it's Trotter. Ryan Mason's cross. And look who's there for West Ham again, it's Tompkins. There's a really good appreciation of where this ball's going to end up, and that's because he's been playing centre-half for years. As soon as it goes wide and the cross comes in, Tompkins in the right place to get his head on that ball. Mason's corner, it's a poor one. Sent forward by Smith. Away by five. It's done, took a deflection, took the power out of it. And comfortable once more for Green, and we are into five additional minutes. No, it's just not a clean strike, so many bodies in front of Dunn as he takes the shot on. Could he's easily have got a deflection maybe, but there's just not enough power on it, just scuffs it. Five will be the difference between West Ham and Southampton, should the score remain the same here. That was poor from Mason, straight to Ricardo Vazte. Looking for a headline on his debut. Oh, yeah, absolutely no support whatsoever, Vazte, as he picked that ball up. All the other West Ham players just said, well, you can get on with it and see how you do, and he's well wide with his attempt in the end. What can Millwall take from this today? Well, I think they've shown a better character in the second half. They, I think they were a little bit shell-shocked when the uh, Kevin Nolan was sent off. They didn't look really sure about how to go about things, changed their formation, that didn't really work. Conceded a, a sloppy first goal and can't call open the scoring. They just really haven't got a grip of the game. Their passing hasn't been great, but they've got themselves back into the game. They'll feel hard done by If they do go on and lose by the, uh, by the Winston Reid goal, they'll feel it uh, should have been a free kick.
stands. West Ham's last five wins will be by a one-goal margin. The results are ticking over. They're banking the points. The Barclays Premier League is a fair distance away at the moment, but it is just becoming interview now for West Ham. Done. Trotter. Foul by Trotter. It's a cheap foul. Silly challenge to make at this stage of the game. He's never going to get to this ball first. He's just going to come through the back of Gary O'Neill. The referee right on the spot, rightly gives the free kick. He is within touching distance of three points. This time United's famous anthem beginning to ring around Upton Park. Ricardo Vaste. Oh, West Ham were tiptoeing forward, trying to creep their way through with Gary O'Neill. Just over two minutes left of additional time. Looks like being five defeats in the last six now for Millwall. They have to turn this form around. Big ass today against the championship leaders. This is the time of year when you can hit a wall in the championship. It's been a, a long, hard slog of Tuesday, Saturday. Winter's having its last hurrah. Only the strongest keep going. And West Ham are 45 seconds away from moving five points clear at the top of the championship. Unless Millwall can come up with a big finish. They will have a corner. Could be the final opportunity for Millwall to rescue a point from the game. I'm sure Sam Sands are nudging the back there that the corner shouldn't have been given, should have been a free kick to his team. Now or never for Millwall. Ryan Mason to take this corner kick once the referee has uh, sorted out the dispute. Quite a few disputes going on inside that West Ham penalty area. The goalkeeper's forward. He thought he was foul for West Ham's goal. Can he have a say at the other end? Mason with delivery, over the head of Ford, and away by Abdoulaye Fly. It's Keo. still we play on. The referee with a check of his watch. David Ford sends it long. Ward has remained forward here. We have had the five additional minutes, but still the game goes on. Off the head of Keo. Jimmy Abdu. This is Ryan Mason, that's dangerous. No nonsense for Abdu, they fly. That's it. West Ham United edge closer to the Barclays Premier League. They take a firm grip of top spot. Five points of difference now between them and second place Southampton. The big, big moments, a contentious moment. The winning goal from Winston Reid. Millwall thought that their goalkeeper David Ford was fouled in the build-up by Julian Fober. Play carried on, and Winston Reid hammered home the winning goal. West Ham did this with 10 men after Kevin Nolan was sent off in the opening 10 minutes. West Ham losing their captain, but they managed to win the points. Andy, quite a day here.
Well, it's extraordinary. Again, it's just testament to the character and the quality that West have in their ranks and in their squad. And I'm sure, I'm convinced, just from this game alone, that's going to carry them back to the Premier League. A famous West Ham anthem ringing out around Upton Park, which tells you that West Ham United have been victorious on Derby Day in the East End. Let's hear that from one of the local boys, Mark Noble. He's with Andy Burton. Mark, well done. There's probably not many bigger West Ham fans than you in this ground today. What does it mean to you to get a win against Millwall? Um, obviously, with Nobby getting sent off so early, it's uh, the boys were brilliant. Um, they're running the nuts off, you know. We, we needed that from, from the minute he got sent off. And uh, you can see what it means to the fans. Uh, but more importantly, you know, we need to get back on track after Ipswich. We had a poor performance there uh, in general. And uh, the most important thing was the three points. And obviously, it's nice to get against Mill. Was this the perfect game to bring out a reaction from you after what happened against Ipswich? Um, yeah, I think so, because obviously it's a home game against Mill and um, everyone just runs that little bit further. We know they are going to as well, and we, we matched that today. And um, it was a lovely finish from Reedy. He, he, uh, it's one to remember for him. Sure, Carlton got a big goal for you at a big time. What tribute would you pay to him? He's on 50 goals to West Ham now. Well, I've been here. 51? <laughs> Yeah, no, I've been here with Coley for many years now, and uh, I know what he's capable of. You know, he's sometimes he's um, you can't no no defence in a nanny league when he's on form can handle him, and um, I think he showed that today up there on his own. He worked for the team, and some of his hold-up play when he had two defenders around him was was fantastic, and it's a credit to him. And um, hopefully, he can keep it up for us the rest of the season. Carlton, did it cross your mind at 1-1 that they might get back into it? They might get a boost from that. No, do you know it was? With, I just said to the lads, listen, we we come from. 1-0 down, I mean, a man down, we won a man down early, so we just thought, when, got our nose in the throw. When it came back to 1-1, I said, yeah, we'll just go and get the other goal, you know, so it wasn't a big problem. Uh, we knew our work rate was going to allow us to do this, you know, so hopefully now that will just put us in good stead for the rest of the season and uh, get rid of that 5-1 defeat we had, had at Ipswich because um, the boys' work rate today was second to none. Top of the league, you staying there? Got to stay there. Um, I know Southampton are going to be putting on the pressure, well, we just got to concentrate on ourselves and get the results. Uh, tick off the wins. Mark Noble, you're the empowered man of the match today. Well done. You've got the champagne. Well done, Give man. them a wave as well in the uh, Bobby Moore stand. Well, well done to you, mate. Thank you. And it is a first win against Millwall in the league for nearly 19 years for West Ham, but a win that could prove to be hugely important come the end of the season. A win not without its controversy, but a win for the home side nonetheless. And this is what it means in terms of the